We're back. We're at Willow Springs with my buddy Rob. We're gonna go over Robert Downey Jr.'s dream cars. This is a special feature that we're doing on all six of his cars that he featured on his show, which is called Downey's Dream Cars. The last episode, we featured three internal combustion vehicles. This episode, we're gonna feature three electric converted vehicles. Correct, all a little bit different than each other. So Rob is the caretaker of these cars right now. He's going through them, making sure they run right, making sure they're safe and all that. And he's also keeping them clean because these are all being given away for the Footprint Coalition, which is Robert's foundation. So you can win any of these. Everything is benefiting his foundation. So let's dig into the cars. Yes. How about we dig into the Corvette first? 1965 C2 Corvette. So this is a dual motor EV setup. So two Hyper 9s run together with the standard rear differential out of the Corvette. This is full ride tech suspension. So it has upgraded geometry for steering, has true steer on it. So this is the one that has the full recycled mushroom interior in it, full workable new top. It has been gone through top and bottom, all the suspension, all the brakes are upgraded. It Has, looks like a new vehicle now. Yep, it's got uh, this amazing matte paint on it. So these two vehicles are painted. Uh, one of them has a wrap because it had gorgeous paint underneath it already. Robert really likes his satin and matte finishes, huh? Yeah, I think that kind of the earthy tones and making them match and they've grown on me. When I'm first, I'm like, ah, it's a unique color. I don't know if I'd paint it like that, but easy on maintenance, easy to wipe down. You don't have to polish it. It is, uh, it's quite nice. All the trim as well. You know, he did this brushed look on, on this one, painted on the others. So then do you know how, how the condition was uh, when he originally did this restoration? So on this one, I'm really unsure. I thought it was a quite a nice car before he started. It was a, it was a great donor. This one was his, the K10. He was already driving that with the the supercharged built motor in it, and I believe the the Mercedes was also in great condition. So great donor cars that were his personal out of his personal collection. Can we take a look at it under the hood? Whatever is under the hood. <laughs> We sure I, can. Okay, so. Battery well, pack, inverters, control unit, breather tank for the uh, torque reduction diff. I have so many questions. The last car that I featured uh, that you had a hand in mm -hmm. was the Porsche 930. That the was 911 EV, yet. 911. The 86. That was, that was a. Uh, Tesla drive unit swapped, yeah. That was a, that was a great and, episode. And that was cool, that, that really changed my perspective on EV swaps, keeping them on the road. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you can return it back to stock if you need Correct. to anytime. This is insane. So this I'm is assuming- This is also non-intrusive. So this is using the factory motor mounts on the front. Yeah, because what it's doing is it's replacing the engine, which is of similar weight, I'm assuming. And it's putting it in place of that, 
Because if you were to like cut the floor or whatever, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to return this back to stock. Correct. So then this is like a good way to do it where it's still putting the weight in the right area. This one has a couple holes for bracketry for bracing, but it is, everything is reversible and everything is trying to keep in spirit of somebody that has a different direction later on down the road and keeping this chassis driving. Okay, so battery here. Um, battery here, battery in the rear as well. It's balancing weight. Oh, can we take a look at that? Uh, that one's underneath. Oh, that one? You would have oh. to be underneath the spare tire. Got it. So it is in this area. It's the same thing of when I pop this. Oh, that's where you charge it? Yep, this is the charge port. Oh. Wait, and this is the original gas fill? Correct. Oh. So this is still fitting in the original gas fill. Besides this. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, what are we looking at here? Like, what are what's all this stuff? What is this? So that is the high voltage junction box. So this is actually the the breakaway that disconnects power from everything. So your mm -hmm. emergency disconnect. Mm -hmm. But this is junction box inverters. So then it's two inverters: one for the front motor, one for the rear motor. Correct. Okay. So this has them bolted to each other. So both motors are in line. Oh, okay. So we have motor, motor, oh. coupler in between. Why did they do that? So it was a way to double the output. So mm. both of them at 150 foot pounds of torque. Now you have a true 300 foot pounds of torque. Because when you said dual motor, I was assuming that this is all a drive nope. swap. This is just a rear wheel drive swap with the traditional rear differential. Still a drive shaft. So then, but there's no transmission. It just goes straight back. Yep. There is a, all there is, is a gear reduction part on the back to switch the torque load. Oh. So it's part of how you can select your gearing for the rear differential. So we have basically two motor controllers, high voltage junction box, battery up front, battery in the rear. And then this, this way, it's the easiest way to swap any front engine rear wheel drive vehicle to a full EV swap. Yeah, so this is one that isn't using the standard transmission. So this is just put and drive, it's kind of single speed. You're varying off the RPM of the motor. Do you know like top speed or any specs on this thing? So this is geared to go, you know, top speed would probably be a hundred. What's the range like? So the range on this one with the dual motor, depending on how you drive it, probably 100 to 120. You could put more batteries in and take more space and be heavier and get a longer range. This is made for kind of working back or Sunday drives. A, I can't imagine this being that much more heavier than the stock oh, it's vehicle. Not. It's, it's not. not. So the... The battery in the back kind of replicates a full tank of gas. And, you know, with all the rest of the stuff you're, you're getting rid of, you know, rate, we're running the radiators this big now to do the cooling system for the motors and the charger. But then this battery with the motors up front, this is probably a little bit lighter than the factory big block that was in it. So updated suspension, Correct. updated brakes, it looks like. This is four wheel disc brake. This is the true steer. This is all the, uh, the ride tech kit front and rear. Mm. So it switches to a coilover. Oh. Yeah, so this is a coilover car now instead of the mono leaf. What's interesting to me is that he still kept the exhaust pipes. So those have LED lights in it. <laughs> so those just replicate that it looks like it has exhaust but they are about this long. <laughs> They're about 10 <laughs> inches long. That is so cool. Can we take the top down so we can take a look yeah, at the Of interior? course, of course. What a, what a great build, inside and out. You know, and, and there's nothing now that gives away the fact that it's EV swapped, including the fact that it still has exhaust tips. Uh, this one is episode four. <laughs> if you guys wanna see the full episode, Head over to Max. Push that side down, please. Where 
every one of these episodes are live. Yep. Tell me about the shifter setup here. Uh, so the shifter is using the OEM feel in it, but it's now connected to the park switch lock and electronic signal underneath built in for drive and reverse. So then when you put it in park, it's still uh, like putting it in park in a normal Correct. car? Correct. Uh, and does neutral do anything? Yes, neutral does not select a gear and it, and it disengages the park lock. So then it can roll. Correct. If you need to push it or something. Correct. Got it. Huh. Other than that, the interior is all redone. It looks very nice. So what were you saying about mushroom? So this is one of the all recycled material interiors that he didn't want to use new consumables. He wanted to keep the eco-friendly, all recycled material, uh, repurpose, reuse direction with it. So this is a, a recycled mushroom interior. It's actually using mushrooms? From what I understand. That's part of the episode. He, they go into to it in depth. I don't know how that works, but that sounds insane. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's, since I'm not the one that chose the interior, I don't want to be <laughs> misquoted on it. But. Right. So then what is this display here? So that display is going to tell you battery Battery life. Can we turn it on? Load, yeah. So that's BMS, so all your battery management system. It's touchscreen. That's part of the charging unit and... Got it. Right. Yeah, I should get it in so you can see it. Okay. All right. So we're at 96%, 172 volts. Uh, that's really the only thing that gives it away. Right? Huh. Even then, so, if you looked in it and you didn't know what that was, you know, it just yeah. wouldn't give it away. All of these cars, you can't tell what's in them from the outside. They have this resto mod OEM style feel with just the wheels and the, the suspension setups and the colors. But they're all kind of a sleeper. How does this one drive? This one drives nice. Do you think this one is the fastest one out of all six cars? No, the truck is. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm actually really curious about this because from what I understand already, it has a standard Volkswagen transmission? It does. So this is, with a little variation from the VET, this is an EV West uh, electric kit that mates to the standard manual transmission. So they can use a lower torque motor that's in it and then have the gear ratio to choose what you want to do. So whether it be hills, freeway, you can select the RPM of the motor for efficiency based on what speed you're going. But it's not like a traditional engine where you shift between gears while no. you're rolling. So you can just put it in third and drive around all day or you're gonna be on the freeway for a while, shift it into fourth, it lowers the RPM of the motor. Wait, and but, you, but you could shift while you're rolling? Oh yeah. So As then it's not has like- a standard clutch. It's not like you're going one, two, three, four when you're driving. Yeah, you, you, you can, but, you it's, can. but it has enough torque. I mean, this, this car in its standard form was barely 50 horsepower, yeah. barely. Yeah. So now, you know, putting, 140 in it at two at two RPM is <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, vastly different than how it was in its OEM form. Out of all of these, this is the one that I'm most interested in driving. Oh yeah, because this one, I always thought about that. Why is it that? I mean, obviously for efficiency reasons, and we got into this a little bit when mm -hmm. we were talking about your 911. Why is it that there's not a transmission where you can just click through the gears? Because I feel like you could get so much more out of it. Well, the reason why you have a normal standard gear ratio in a transmission is because an ICE motor has a limited range where it's optimum in performance, in torque, power, and you're trying to select a gear to meet that range to be efficient. When you run a standard motor in the EV side, it's efficient from low RPM all the way to high, and you get the same torque load. Right, but then so, with, in this case, mm -hmm. it's even more efficient if you have the four gears to select from. 
I prefer, it's, it's more of a preference. You get kind of the feel of the old bus at the same time, but shifting isn't necessary. Like you'll see with driving it, you could just leave it in third and drive all day and you'll never have to. So do you think it accelerates faster in first versus third? It does, but you have a top speed. With the RPM of the motor, first gear, you're gonna go 30 miles an hour. But then wouldn't it be faster if you shifted from one, two, three, four versus just leaving it in third or no? I believe it's, I believe that the time it'll take to shift compared to just putting in third and flooring it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is It would be about but, the same. But, but it, it has a clutch, a working, like stock Volkswagen 100%. clutch. Yep. That is so cool. Yep. All right, so what are the things that I can see here? So this, there's solar on the roof. This has an <laughs> inverter and this is a... <laughs> a full on grill. This is a full on grill <laughs> that works off of the electric. I love that. That is great. It, it, off of the actual EV batteries. Yes. So. <laughs> and this is the the. That is switch. the on. Yep. Oh, that is. Time to have a barbecue after this. Yeah, huh? that's what I'm saying. We could have lunch right here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we're really waiting for. All right. That so, one. Let me grab the key for oh, okay. it. Takes the square key. This is episode six. Oh, this is the last second episode. Yes, okay. it is. So I'll have you check in here as I grab that. Nice. I. It blows me away every time how much room this has. Nine people can fit comfortably. Yeah, Plus, and you can barbecue when you get there. And it drives great. With and two surfboards, but no crumple zone. For those of you guys who don't know, this is the headlight. So like, if you look out here and you see the back of the headlight, where your knee and your foot well area is, that's where the headlight is. So, so this is the this is the standard OEM square key that opens this. You're so kidding. Then, so here is the charge port. Okay, that's it says EV West, Correct. very nicely built, all CNC'd, where the stock fuel filler location is. And then this is this is the motor. Yeah. And then so we have the just, controller, we have 12 volt, or sorry, 110 volt AC mm -hmm. compressor. So full EV, EV driven AC system. Oh, nice. Okay. So it has AC and heat. Right. Uh, then this is all upgraded suspension, all tubular arms, front and rear, oh, all upgraded cool. brakes and bearings, four wheel disc brake from Willwood. Really nice. This is very, very nicely done so then um all the batteries are right here so you can see how, up here how is it that the stock volkswagen transmission can handle this power um usually the bus transmissions in this form are the strongest than a normal bug so anytime anybody's doing sand rails or anything with a swap they do make upgraded transmissions in the bus form to handle this this is, is this air cooled then now still? Uh, or this, does it have a radiator? Yep, this has the radiator oh. right there. That's all it needs. Just that little tiny thing. Yep. Huh. Look at this. 8,000 RPM max. Yep. <laughs> so it has 150 horsepower, you're saying? Yes. Oh, how much torque? 150 foot pounds of torque oh, is what it has. Foot -pounds torque. So. Usually on the electric motors, it's just a torque rating right. over the horsepower. Huh. And then uh, it's just like a adapter plate that goes to the stock transmission. Correct. So it's a key weight version input shaft to be able to mate to the custom clutch disc. So then can you free rev this motor or no? Yes. There's a neutral drive reverse. So if you wanted to drop the clutch in this thing, you could. Yes. But you could also just push in the clutch, rev it up and let the clutch out. So you don't have to put it in neutral, put it in drive, push the clutch in, rev it up. That is so cool. Clutch kick, whatever you want to do. We're not going to do that today. But <laughs> I, I just like the fact that you can do that. And I love, this is what I like about the future of tuning in general. 
because this is it's going to get to a point where you can build something like this with a transmission and you can still drop the clutch in it. Oh yes. And do burnouts and have fun 100%. and drift. Yep. And and actually have an e-brake set up. Yes, everything. you can. All of that. Yep. Like a, a hydro, a drift yep. drift setup. Okay, let's talk about the interior here. These things are so hilarious to me. I just, I love them. So we've had a chance to shoot a lot of these at uh, Gabriel Iglesias' yeah, he's, place. he's a bus fanatic. Yeah, he's a big bus guy. This is really special. What's going on with this wheel? So all of the cars have custom wheels. This one is kind of uh, a boat Chris Craft style feel. Wanted a wood wheel in here with still having a high quality wheel. So we ran a Nardi kind of wood throwback classic. Trying to get to the era of the early 70s. But this is uh, electric power steering. So custom column. Whoa, it's all right here. Yep, it's all adaptive, so it's torque load based. So the the more you struggle, the more it helps. Ah. So under dash AC, that is the EVAC oh. in here. So how does the heat work then? So this one is just an AC unit. Oh, okay. You can add the heat brick in here easily off the 110 oh. and it actually just ducks in. You put them right before the vents in this and select your temperature range. Oh, okay. So this is the full split window where they fold out. Yeah. So then what's what's this? Uh, this is another EV screen to tell you your, this is the digital screen to tell you EV load, battery cell, percent. This does digital speed as well, since this is in kilometers. Uh. <laughs> we didn't want to switch that out, wanted to stay true to the imported bus. So w was this from Germany? Then? This is a uh, Brazil. Oh, Brazil. Huh. It looks great. I love it. This is ready to cruise at the beach right now. It already has two surfboards. Yeah, it uh, throw your cooler in the back and go and grill. So, so neat. So LED light conversion as well has uh, the roof rack can hold weight. So anything you want to load up there. And this thing drives quite nice. What a cool build. I really like this a lot. The color really catches me because it's that desert tan style. <laughs> if we parked it right tones. here, it look, look, it's in. the same, <laughs> yeah. same color. If we just parked it in the dirt right here. Okay, so last vehicle, this is episode one. This is the one that kick-started it all. And we watched this yes. tow a real, was it an Abrams tank? I believe it was, yeah. I don't even truck, know how many Full truck, trailer, things. tank, all of it. This The torque in this is the Tesla large drive unit performance model uh, with the most kilowatt hour batteries out of any of them. So it can handle the big tires, handle the range. This is a divorced style setup, so it still has true four wheel drive with a transfer case and then a large drive unit running into the transfer case instead of an all time all wheel drive or a separate motor front and rear. Mm. So is it just single motor then? Single motor, single large drive unit, yes. Oh. And this is one that Robert had personally for, for quite some time that he had built that was part of his couple movies that he did. Yep. That was a supercharged, big motor, gas guzzler, but super fun to drive, but quite wild, shall I say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, full... I really enjoyed this episode. So then just looking at underneath it, what is this, what is this brake here? So What's that, that? is the e-brake. Oh, okay. And then that, is that a, like an upgraded stock transfer case? Yes, that is, a, that is an up, upgraded divorced transfer case setup oh. that allows us to run the, the electric motor up front that if you watch the episode, they ran the motor in reverse oh. and did quite a, quite a few custom touches to get that to work. They had some, some hurdles to overcome. It's quite interesting. Right, so then that's cool. You could still select all wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Correct. From, from inside. Yep. 
because it's the it's a functional transfer case. So mm -hmm. then this has a low range too then. Yes. And this has upgraded leaf springs from Atlas to be able to handle the additional torque and a little extra weight. This one weighs a little bit more than the factory form with the extra batteries. Wow, this is has legit. This big is... brakes on it. So six piston front, four piston rear. So then the heat exchanger is in the back now here. Correct. What's, so the biggest thing is to okay. control temperature. So the batteries, when they're discharging, they warm up. When they're charging, when you plug in, they have to be a certain range to be able to optimally charge and fill. So that controls the temperature to be able to charge, to be able to discharge properly, huh. keep in that range. So then is the controller mounted back here? No, everything's in the engine bay. What's this right here then? What's this box for? Uh, back here is for the, the back battery. So that is just a junction oh. box. That is just a junction. Where is the battery located in the back? So I'll show you right here. Let me move, move my wipe down rag here, but here's one that's oh. disguised as a toolbox. Ah, that's, that's really Which is useful. a great weight placement yeah. for this one. And then we have another set of batteries here. This Again, is non-destructive. Correct. Like it, it's it's replacing the weight of the motor. Correct. Uh, this is electric power steering. Yeah, right here. This yeah. is electric hydro, or sorry, hydro boost setup as well. This is electric AC. Oh, so this is the motor. Is this a motor that? So that's a pump. Okay. That this drives. Ah. Oh. So this. That is gives a, a vacuum for the brakes. Yeah, that gives pressure oh. instead of the vacuum canister yep. and a vacuum pump, this is hydraulically running it. Ah. And then this is the fluid. For yeah, the this radio. is the reservoir for the batteries. Ah. So it has an electric pump to cool the batteries. Got it. And so the this one, or, and it has a uh, condenser. Air, yep, air so this is for condenser. AC, this is for the cooling system. Mm. And then so there's one in the back too for the back batteries. Correct. So what's this right here? So that is the EVAC compressor. So that oh. runs off high voltage, 400 volt system in this, so. Got it. And then it still has to have a traditional Correct. 12 volt battery to run all the other little things, right? Correct. Like dome light and uh, Yeah, we have, uh, we have a lot of things that were OEM on the truck that still require a 12 volt. Um, so then we have an inverter to be able to change, you know, how it's charging, how it charges the 12 volt. Because when it's running, it's charging the 12 volt. Yeah. So all of these, all of these systems for EV still have a 12 volt low side and then they have the high side. Mm. And then they have some components that you can choose whether you want a 12 volt AC pump if you want 110 volt 220 400 there's a lot of different options to meet what ev components you're running so then how much torque does this one make um this one on ludicrous about 600 that's a lot yeah that's a lot for this truck it is uh there's a lot of gear ratio you know out of the trans it's already in the large drive unit transfer case then differentials then tire size there's a lot of calculations to get it to put it down how you want it or yeah because if you put this on all-wheel drive or if you yeah, put this on four-wheel four -wheel drive yeah and you put it on low range and you put it in ludicrous mode yeah that is a lot of power going to the ground that is a lot of power going to the ground that is uh your top speed will probably be 20 <laughs> but i think you'll <laughs> You'll get there pretty quick. I mean, you'll pull a M1 Abrams tank. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's check out the interior. Yeah. So then. So fortunate enough, this interior was already uh, pretty much complete in its previous form. And the added touches of 
the AC, AC controls, the iPad that does all your touchscreen shifting, battery management. This has a very high-end stereo system in it. Mm. That is that is really neat. I like it. Vintage Air. Yep. Then I believe uh, in each of these, I don't know where he put the sticker in this one, but he signed each car, as you see in the bus or if you've seen in the previous cars, he might have hidden a sticker on this one. This is the burnout machine then, yeah. out of all of these. Nice Marco steering wheel. What a cool truck. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.